Good morning. Welcome to my wine making stream today. Now for the first part of the stream, uh, we're going to put all of these peaches and plums into the carboy. So that's going to take me quite a bit of time so that I'll give people plenty of time to go ahead and tune in. And after I do this for a bit, we'll talk about how I'm going to make it, what ingredients you'll need, and equipment. So it's going to be a bit of a long process. But what I have here, these are peaches. I got fresh peaches and froze them all last night. So when they do thaw, more juice will come out of them. So I have about mm, four pounds of peaches, maybe a little bit less because we had to cut around the pith and we lost a bit of fruit. Then over here, if you can see, I have two or uh, about four pounds of plums as well. And we're going to make a peach and plum wine. Now I also froze the plums and you do have to chop them quite thin because uh, the carboy that I'm actually using, which is a really common carboy, it has a pretty small mouth on it. Now uh, fruit can be a bit messy to get out of your carboy. So what I'm using here is a cheesecloth bag. Um, you can also use a brewing bag, anything that you can put your uh, fruit in so that it's easier to rack when you need to get it out. So when I do eventually um, take the fruit out, um, I will leave the bag in this carboy and then just get the wine out and put it into an empty carboy or bucket. Then after it's completely empty, I will slowly rip out this cheesecloth bag. And I've done this several times uh, on a smaller scale with cordials. Um, those, uh, I use mason jars, which also um, can have a small mouth. I do the exact same product process. I have a rubber band here. Uh, I usually just use plain cheesecloth because mason jars are so much smaller, but I went and got the bags for this since these are so much larger. And it's worked really, really well for my cordials in the past, and I assume it's also going to work pretty well with um, the wine. Now this wine is going to be a three gallon wine. So you need two to three pounds, depending um, on your fruit, how sweet it is, how much you have, two to three uh, pounds of fruit per gallon. So I have between six to eight pounds of fruit right here. So uh, I decided to make a three gallon. Now in the carboy in front of me, we're going to actually make five gallons of a berry wine, which we'll get to. The berries are in bags, frozen in the freezer. So, but we're just gonna do this one first. Now the berry one, we may not get on the stream fully because Five gallons of water takes a lot longer to boil, and we already have three gallons of water on the stove boiling. So by the time I'm done with this, we can easily move on to the next step without a lot of time wasted. So that's what we're doing today. And I'll also go on go into what else we're going to be putting, because we're not just going to be putting the fruit, the peaches and the plums into the carboy, we'll also be putting in a few other things. Also, I'll talk about the yeast that I'm going to be using today, two different yeasts for two different wines. So anybody watching so far? Got five people. Nice. All right. So we're about halfway done with these already. Now the recipe I'm using today is from a blog called Pixie's Pocket. I've followed her blog for a few years now and she has really amazing recipes. Um, 
her blog is mostly about growing and foraging and uh, she has quite a few mead and uh, wine recipes so if you're looking to make an easy mead or wine I would definitely check out Pixie's Pocket because that's where I got this. Now her original recipe that we're using today used cherries which I believe cherries are a stone fruit which peaches and plums are also stone fruits. So I'm going to use the exact same recipe, but I'm subbing in the fruit that's available to me. And also, cherries tend to get lumped in the, into the same category as berries most of the time. So I'm using blackberries, blueberries, uh, strawberries, and raspberries in my next wine. Uh, I'm going to use the same recipe on her site as well. So one with pure stone fruit and one with berries because to me cherries kind of fall into that odd category of both. But uh, that's the fruit that I have with me today. I cannot, I couldn't get cherries so we're subbing in a different kind of fruit. And here, let's shake it down a bit. Yeah, we still have a ton of room in this brew bag so all of this should easily fit. Now, when I do fill this thing completely up, um, I'm going to pull up the rubber band, tie a knot, and just let it sit in the bottom. And when it comes time to get it out, I'll just fish it out with a fork or a long butter knife and then slowly pull it out. And if you have any questions or comments, feel free to just uh, type them in the comments. I have a moderator with me and a helper today, so he can read any of your questions or comments aloud. Fingers are getting a little bit cold. So after I do these peaches, I'll take a little break. Uh, read what I found on the yeast to you guys and talk about the other ingredients that we're going to use and uh, the original recipe. And then we'll get back, put in the plums, and then from there we'll go to the stove. Now, if you're not able to tune into this stream, um, it also will be uploaded to YouTube probably later today. Since we aren't able to have ANS classes in person during this time, uh, hopefully uh, these videos that I've been making and uploading will kind of uh, be a stand-in to the classes that we usually have. So, and we can't usually have these kind of classes. Uh, we're not allowed to make alcohol or bring alcohol into the art center. So, what a great time to teach everyone how, and, or sh you can make along with me, uh, to, but uh, to make alcohol and show everybody how to do it because we wouldn't be able to do this in person anyway. And if we did, it would be pretty hard because we have to boil all the water, chop fruit. It can get pretty messy, especially if you don't have sinks and things for people to use. Right. Now some of these pieces I will be cutting smaller because they are a little bit too big to put into the mouth of this. Alright, we are almost done with the first tray. Alright. <clears throat> and there we go. 
all the peaches have been added. And of course, I did wash all the peaches before adding them to this. Be sure to thoroughly wash all of your fresh fruit. All right, now we have all the peaches. Oh, just a little bit. I hear our water starting to simmer too. All right, so there's all of our peaches. So I'm gonna go ahead and move this tray out of the way and we will start on our plums. However, I'm gonna let my hands take a little bit of, of a break because it's pretty chilly. Now, let me go ahead and pull up the original recipe. This is cherry wine for a one gallon batch. So we need two or three pounds of cherries whole in a mesh bag. Well, in our case, we're using plums and peaches, still stone fruit. Uh, three to four cups of sugar. I'm going to be using three cups of sugar per gallon. So we are using uh, three gallons. So there are about uh, nine, maybe a tiny bit over nine uh, cups of sugar in one bag. So for three gallons, I'm using an entire bag of sugar. And I'm going to pour this into our boiling water later on. So you'll need a whole, if you're going to make this exact recipe, um, you're going to need six to eight, depending on your preference, what you have, 68 pounds of fruit, one whole bag of sugar. Then as a yeast nutrient, I'm going to use, now it says for one gallon, a small handful of raisins. I'm going to use about a cup. So. You can use more or less your preference. I'm just going to use a cup of plain California raisins. And the last thing, uh, she said that she used two to three slices of fresh ginger root, which um, I'm actually going to leave the fruit and the raisins together in here uh, to ferment. I'm not going to leave the ginger. I'm not sure what that's going to do. So I'm actually just going to boil the ginger into the water pull it out. So it'll still have some ginger flavor, but it's not going to be super overpowering because I really don't want it to be an overpowering ginger flavor in my wine. All right. Uh, and then yeast. So for this first wine here with the peaches and the plums, we're going to be using, let me pull it up. Uh, yes, this uh, Premier Cote de Blanc Active Dry Yeast Red Star. So this is what I'm using today. Let's read a little bit about the yeast. Red Star Cote de Blanc, formerly known as Cote de Blancs, is a strain of yeast that has been derived from a selection of uh, Geisenheim Institute in Germany. It's a relatively slow fermenter, identical to Geisenheim Epernay, but producing less foam. So that's good. This yeast requires nutrient addition for most Chardonnay fermentations, which that's what these raisins will be for. Uh, Cote de Blanc produces fine, fruity aromas and may be controlled by lowering temperature to finish with some residual sugar. It is recommended for reds, whites, sparkling cuvées, and non-grape fruit wines, especially apple. So we have a non-grape fruit wine, so this should work out pretty well for us on the first one. So I'm going to go ahead and add the raisins to this, which may be a little bit more difficult since they are so small and quite sticky. So all right, do we have any questions so far? No, none come through yet. How many people? Do uh, this shows three. Sweet. I'm going to have to push these raisins down with some plums to get them in there.
Now for the next stream, probably not in this stream since we're, this is just winemaking, I have a period recipe that I've been wanting to try are called Wardenus and Syrup, which are actually pears and syrup. So I have all the ingredients for that. Um, that may be later on this week because in addition to just uh, teaching you all how to make alcohol, we'll also be doing some uh, period recipes. There we go. Now, for those of you who were here for the dandelion wine video or stream, uh, it's doing pretty well. Still going strong. Checked on it today. Uh, we did have a little, a little problem with it because we actually did not use any form of cheesecloth because we just didn't have it. And we didn't find these until today. So I had to just let... Uh, that whole pound of raisins um, just in there with nothing. And we left the wine in the sink for a few days because we did have trouble with it bubbling over the raisins getting inside of the airlock. So if you do make that, I would suggest that you use one of these cheesecloth bags so you won't have the same problem that we did. Now it's still fine. The wine is fine. Uh, we didn't lose very much of it. It's just mostly uh, the raisins uh, just clogged up uh, the throat of it and it started to bubble over. But after about two days, that stopped. Uh, it calmed down and we were able to put it in um, a cold or a cool, dark place inside the closet and um, it's fine now. It shouldn't bubble over anymore. But hopefully these will not bubble over at all since all the fruit and raisins are contained inside the bag. So if you want to see what you're doing again, I shared it to some more places. Okay, so if you just tuned in, I'm making uh, wine today. This first wine that I'm doing right now is a peach and plum wine and it's going to be a three gallon batch. So I've already added all the peaches and right now I am continue, continuing to add the plums and the raisins. And I'm almost out of raisins, so that's a good thing. I still have quite a few plums to go. So if you're just now tuning in, uh, feel free to ask any questions, comment. I have someone that will read me all the comments and questions that you guys have. And after I'm done with this, we'll go ahead and move on to the berry wine, which is basically going to be the same process of just stuffing all the berries and all the raisins into the bag. Periodically, you have to shake. And winemaking in this large a batch <laughs> isn't exactly a quick process. Um, we had to do a lot of setup before this too. Um, chopping all of your fresh, if you did choose to do fresh fruit, you have to chop and freeze all of that. Uh, if you do frozen, you don't have to do that much work as long as you're sure that your fruit is small enough. But we also had to uh, sanitize everything. If you see the bubbles in uh, the cardboard in front of you, then you can see that we've sanitized with Star Sam, and we had to do that with all of our equipment today. Now, at the end of this process, 
Um, we are going to take a few measurements to see in the future how much alcohol we actually made from this. Now I'm assuming that we're going to get somewhere between 12 and 14 percent alcohol, but to be sure we're going to start the measurements with that today. And I'm also going to be showing you guys how to use foil to uh, pull down your wort so it's going to be a lot faster. And my water looks like it is boiling or very close to boiling. Oh, and I am almost, oh, that was the last of the raisins. My helper's going to check on the boiling water since I'm not quite done here. And we're boiling the water, one, because we're not using um, bottled water. Um, we're just using sink water because that's all that's available to us. So we're boiling it to sanitize it. And don't worry, we've already sanitized all of our um, uh, buckets and uh, pots that we're using. Is it boiling? Yep, yeah, I turned it down, so. Okay, because I'm not quite done here. Because uh, I still have to peel and chop my ginger and put that in the boiling water. And dissolve my sugar in there too. And I think with the ginger, I'm going to put it in with the boiling water and sugar. And when the sugar dissolves, we'll take the, um, the water off the boil. But we're going to have to let it cool for a while before we can add our yeast. Because if you add your yeast to really hot water, uh, it's just going to kill it, so we don't want that to happen. But I will also let my ginger just sit in that water as it cools to extract more flavor. All right. And when I'm all done with this, I'll hold. I'll put this up on the table so you can see what the bag actually looks like uh, with all this fruit in there. Some of these are not wanting to separate. I'm going to switch to this hand because my hand, it, your hands are going to get cold <laughs> doing this. So. All right, so we have about a quarter of it left. Oh, found a pit.
go ahead and turn the water back up if you need to, because I'm almost done with this. By the time it comes back up to a boil, uh, we'll be ready. Just a couple left, and we're all done. We only have a little bit left. We're on the very end of it. And last two pieces that I don't have to cut. One, two, three. And oh, good, I don't even have to cut these. They're just coming apart last two pieces and we're done all right so we're gonna cut here I'm gonna go on over to the stove and uh, add stuff to the water so I'll see you guys in a minute I'll wash my hands Hello, I'm back. Now we're going to move on to part two. We've got all of our fruit in the carb away. Now I'm going to work on peeling the ginger. In the original recipe, it says two to three slices, but since mine is a bit bigger, um, I'm actually going to uh, shave off an entire knob of ginger and add it into my boiling water. My water is boiling, so right after I shave this ginger, peel this ginger, I'm going to add it to my boiling water. Alright, I am going to cut this. I'm just 
just going to go ahead and add about four pretty large slices into the water. Now I am going to fish those out at some point as well. All right, so now that we've got the ginger in there, it's time for the sugar. So I'm going to be adding one entire bag of sugar. So for this recipe, it says three to four. I'm going to be using three. Three cups of sugar per gallon. There's uh, nine cups of sugar in this bag. So I'm adding the whole bag. Here we go. And we add all the sugar so the yeast can have something nice to eat. All right, so here is my big spoon that I'm going to be starting with. All right, so just, I need to let that sugar dissolve. All right. Beautiful. Ginger. The ginger actually gave it a pretty nice light yellow color. Put my big spoon back. Here I have a sanitation bucket. And now that the water is really, really hot, we're going to need to cool it down to add the yeast. So what I have here is a big coil and we're going to use this to help pull it down. All right, I'm going to go ahead and turn it off the heat. Pull out the thermometer so they can hear from now. All right. I believe so, put that here. We have a big hose going from our sink to this. Okay. So sink connected to this. We have our coil that has been sanitized, so don't worry. I'm just gonna put it straight. There we go. And then we're going to be running water, cold water, through here, but we need something to catch it. Now, if you're outside, which a lot of times this does happen outside, just let this go on the ground. But we are inside today because it's very cold outside, so I'm going to let it go into this bucket. All right. So I'm just going to go until this pot fills with water. We'll turn it off, we'll dump it, and we'll just continue until the water is um, body temperature. I am having this leaks a little bit, so I'm just going to put that before I catch it. All right. If you would uh, hand me my yeast. Which one? Um, the baby? No, no, no. The green one. Okay. 
Yeah, so let's see what temperature we're actually going to need for this. Um, now here it says uh, 95 to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. So we're going to test this so, uh, wart. Now when it gets to 95 to 100 degrees, then we can pour in our yeast. And once we have poured in our yeast, we will put it into the cardway and we're all done and our wine is finished and we can move on to the next one. Give the coil a swirl. I do have cold water going through this. <laughs> right. And now we wait. We wait till it just gets cool. What's that? Hmm? What temperature is that? Let's look. About 150 degrees. We've got to bring that down 50 degrees. It's going to take a hot minute. My big pot is getting pretty full. We're going to stop for right now. I'm going to go ahead and drain out. All right, now we can go ahead and start the berry wine if my partner wants to just continue this process. Dumping the water out uh, and just waiting for the temperature to come down. But while we're waiting for the temperature to come down, we can go ahead and start on our second one. So I'll see you in a bit.
Hello. I'm back. All right, so now we are going to start on our five gallon batch. So if you guys can see this in frame, you can see all the raisins and peaches and plums in the little bag. And they're in a nice, neat little bag. Now they won't float up and get stuck into your airlock. Now let's go ahead and I'm going to make the same recipe again. However, this time I'm still going to use one cup of raisins. The raisins are our yeast nutrient. All right, there we go. One cup of raisins. All right. So, and we will add these in the middle of the berries. Uh, it's just easier to smash them down. What I have here is a berry medley, and I got these at Aldi. You can use whatever berries you want. And these uh, contain strawberries, blackberries, blueberries, and raspberries. So we're making a berry wine. And these are 16 ounces. Now, um, we're going to use two bags per gallon of wine. Here I have 10 bags of berries, so we're making five gallons of wine. So I'm going to put all these berries into here. Now for sugar, we um, are going to use one entire bag and then about half of the next one. We need 15 cups total. This is nine. So we'll need six cups from this bag. And we will actually uh, measure that out while we, we put it in the water. So a little bit more because we're making more alcohol with this one. So let's go ahead and start with the berries. This one I assume is going to be a lot uh, messier than the last batch because berries uh, can leave a red residue everywhere. So. Mm. Let me get a few in there. First, start. There we go. All right. So I don't have a moderator right now. He's actually helping uh, cool down the wart from the last batch. It's going to take us a while to do that. But if we're going to have both done today, well, Oh no. Some of these may be a little too big to fit in there. I want to cut them at the end. So it's going to take a bit because there's a lot of berries. So if you do have any questions or comments, um, when he gets caught up, uh, we can talk about those. After I've done a couple of bags of these berries, I'll talk about the yeast that we're going to be using for this one, which is different. Now, if you wanted to, uh, you could use the same yeast. It would probably turn out fine, but uh, I actually had four bag, four packets of yeast, and I want to use all of them, or at least three. Like uh, in the first stream, I used um, one that had more of a floral taste to it for my dandelion wine. In the um, peach and plum wine, I'm going to use um, the Red Star uh, yeast that I had. And in this one, I'm going to be using Loveland, which is not the Red Star brand, uh, K1V1116. So that's the yeast that we're going to be using, the berry wine. Is it the best yeast to use? Probably not, but it's what I have on hand, and I'm not able to go and uh, leave my house and get another one, but it should be fine. I'll read you the description in a little while. Ooh, some of these strawberries are a little bit too big to go in there, so we'll leave, leave those to the ends, and I do have a very sharp knife that I'll cut, use to cut. Today. 
Now berries are especially important um, when you to use uh, this cheesecloth because berries like these raspberries and blackberries have little seeds uh, and if they do get squished they are a little bit difficult to get out and they'll go up into your um, airlock so I well my boyfriend and I have made a blackberry a blueberry mead before and that's the problem that we had we use a lot of blueberries and uh, it was our first time ever making a fruit mead and we didn't use a brew bag and it blew up in the closet blue all over the carpet from those or purple from those blueberries it was a bit of a mess I wish I had a funnel for this. Oh my. Just like this. Hmm. Gonna try to use this spoon instead. Some of these at the very bottom of the bag are in tiny little pieces. So it's a little, a little bit more difficult than the first batch I did. And a lot more messy. I'm going to have red stained pans after this. How's the fire going? Is that 100? They're slightly above. The 100 bag. degrees? Yep. Um, All right, when I'm done with this bag, we can switch and uh, start uh, funneling it in, and we'll film that process. I'm almost done with this bag. All right, I'm done with this bag now. We'll let these strawberries thaw. And uh, we'll take a break. See, when you use the coil, it's a lot quicker than it when you just uh, let it cool down over time. All right, so I'm going to go wash my hands, and we'll be back in the kitchen.
All right, guys, and we're back. So I'm going to use my Red Star uh, Premier Cote de Blanc yeast. And the temperature is a little under 100 degrees. So we're going to go ahead and add our yeast. And also, before I do that, I'm going to fish out my ginger. Because we no longer need it. It's been sitting in that water. All the flavor has gone out of it. And we're done. All right, no more ginger. All right, and go our yeast. All right, yeast has been added. I'm going to stir that around for a little bit. It's all in there. All right. I'm going to sanitize this for the next batch. Okay. So now that we've added our yeast, we have to get it in with the fruit now. So I'm going to use this. Auto siphon. My auto siphon. All right, there we go. And hopefully you will see this uh, on the stream. I don't know how. It's low. not in frame. It's I not in frame. Um, I have to. I can. Down yeah, if you want to tilt it down so they can get it in frame. As you can see, my little auto siphon here. There we go. It's putting all of our yeast, sugar, ginger water in with our fruit. And this is really the last step to winemaking. The only, I would say the only difficult part is, um, getting all the necessary materials you need, like a big pot. Now, in the last stream, we just did one gallon, and that was much easier to do. I would highly suggest st uh, starting your journey with one gallon, and then working up. So I already had this huge pot here, and I had another one, um, it's out of frame right now, but to put the cold water in, although if you were doing this outside, you wouldn't really need that, but you're gonna, having an auto siphon makes it so much easier then trying to pour this in through a funnel, it gets messy. So you'll need to buy an auto siphon, a big pot, and a carboy. Now we used a Carl Rossi wine bottle for our one gallon. Works perfectly. But if you want more than that, you're going to need to buy a three or a five gallon carboy. Now today we're using two five gallons. I have a three gallon, but it's full of mead right now. So. Um, we're going to just put three gallons in the five, and it shouldn't be a problem. Right. And then we just wait for this to go, and there's not a whole lot left. This does, it works pretty quickly. So let's see if I can, yeah, it's still going. Now, when are we going to drink these wines? Um, they should all be ready in about six months. Um, uh, maybe if Triumph isn't canceled, we could drink them then. Um, if it is canceled, next year at Gulf Wars, we could bring these. Or really, wine could be drank at any uh, little event that we have, uh, maybe during Christmas time. There's a lot of SCA events in October that I really enjoy. So um, anytime past August, I would say. Um, these wines are perfectly ready to drink. Now, we are going to leave these wines in the carboy probably for a good two weeks because they're gonna just keep bubbling and bubbling. After two weeks, um, we can uh, get the fruit out and uh, leave them in the carboys for as long as we want to until we're ready to bottle. But after you remove the fruit, you're going to want to keep oops, keep your wine. Let's see. 
another push. Yeah. There we go. Out of the bottom of the barrel here. Finish this up real quick. We are almost done. last little bit of it because I still see some of my yeast sinking to the bottom here and I don't want that. re-sanitize all this before the next batch. Since I still have a bit here, I think I might be able to pour it. We'll see. Alright, and that's it. We're done with that batch. All right, and that is our three gallon peach and plum wine. It's all done. All we have to do now is pop one of these on the top and that's it. All right, we're gonna take a short break and get the berry one set up next.
Logan. So we are all finished with our first wine, our three gallon. Now we're moving on to the five gallon. So off camera, uh, my helper today, he's going to fill up the big pot with five gallons of water and we're measuring that through uh, quart mason jars. So uh, he's doing that. So if you hear any water, that's what's happening. He's also helping me sanitize um, the, uh, We've already sanitized the carboys, but anything that else that we need, the spoon, the um, uh, auto siphon, uh, anything that I've used so far over there, he's sanitizing it for me while I continue with this. So let's see if these strawberries are thawed now. They are, so I'm going to go ahead and chop these in half. And as we've been busy, my berries have been thawing a bit more, so it should be a little bit easier to put them into here now. Oh, and um, off the stream, when uh, we were putting in uh, the, ber the uh, berries, I um, pulled the rubber band off of this, tied a big knot, let it fall in. So unfortunately, you guys didn't get to see that, but it was really quick. All right, let's go move on to our second bag of berries. Oh, before we do that, let's, before I get my hands uh, very dirty with berry juice, uh, let me go ahead and uh, read about the yeast we're going to use for this. So, the Lalvin K1B116. All right, uh, it's a wine yeast. Uh, the K1B1116 winemaking yeast strain is a rapid starter with a constant and complete fermentation between 50 and 95 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's a pretty big range. Capable of surviving a number of difficult conditions, such as low nutrient musts and high levels of sulfur dioxide or sugar. This is going to have a very high level of sugar because we are using uh, about one and a half bags for this. So good for that. Uh, the K1B1116 strain tends to express the freshness of white grape varieties such as Sauvignon Blanc, uh, Chenin Blanc, and Seval. Fruit wines and wines made from concentrates poor in nutrient balance benefit from the capacity of this yeast to adapt to difficult fermentation conditions. And uh, it's also good at restarting stuck fermentations. Uh, highly recommended for dry whites, aged reds, and late harvest wines. All right, so that's what we're going to be using for this one. All right, so let's go ahead and move on to putting the rest of the berries in here. All right, so we've got some big strawberries again. Yeah, it looks like I'm gonna have to pick out all my strawberries and uh, cut them at the very end because they are giving us a little bit of trouble with this bout. Nope. Now, I'm not sure if we're going to have another stream when we uh, rack these or um, bottle them. Um, We'll have to see when that time comes if people want a stream of that. Most of that um, is pretty simple. Um, I may have a, a recipe when we do that. Maybe we can do uh, a period recipe while also um, straining the fruit out and all of that. Uh, we'll have to see when that gets closer. My dandelion wine still has at least uh, another week before I do anything with that. Um, so we'll see when that stops bubbling. I checked today and it's still bubbling, so I can't touch it this week. Maybe near the end I will be able to do something about it. I wish there was an easier way to do this, but 
I've not found one. Now, if I do decide to cut the stream, um, this process is the exact same as the other. Uh, I'll probably uh, keep going until I add the ginger and sugar. Uh, but it should be about the same process. So if you do want to start making your own wine, it's not too difficult. You just have to have fruit, yeast, and uh, equipment. Now, I, I would always use glass when making mead, wine, beer, anything like that. Um, I think glass is best. Some people do it in plastic. That's up to you. Glass, um, well, plastic is cheap and readily available. Some people will do it in the water jugs, but I'm not a fan of doing that. Uh, if your water happens to be too hot, um, you can melt it. Um, breathability. Uh, breathability. What was it? Yep. Plastic. It's. There's a debate whether plastic will breathe while you're mm. doing your stuff, so they'll add oxygen into it. Okay. That's a common thing. This on the plastic floor. Yeah. So, plastic has its disadvantages. Um, But if you're on a budget and you want to try it, uh, also I heard about um, Instant Pot wine. That sounds fun. <laughs> I've seen a few YouTube videos, people making wine in their Instant Pots. I have an Instant Pot, but I've not done wine in it. Uh, I'd like to do yogurt in it, but I've not done wine. Whew. All right. So it's going on. Any, Nothing much. Any viewers yet? Uh, I'd say that there's one. Okay. Do we want to go ahead and cut it since this is getting a little bit messy? Yeah, okay. if you want. All right. So let me say goodbye before you cut it off. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. This is going to take me quite a bit of time. Maybe I can find uh, a little bit of an easier way to get these berries into this because my hands are dirty and I've only got about one and a half bags in here. Um, but this wine will be the same exact process as the last one. Uh, a knob of ginger, cut it up, put it in your boiling water, and then fish it out before you put it in uh, to your wine. Then uh, I'm going to use uh, one bag and, well, actually 15 cups of sugar for this uh, five-gallon batch. So 10 bags of fruit or um, uh, 10 pounds of fruit, 15 cups of sugar, five gallons of water, then the K1V116 yeast and a knob of ginger. And don't forget your cup of raisins. All right, so I'm going to end the stream here, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.